scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Shadabaranda gabarukas kedebe legatia Imbra takatos kadela katos avrende gedeba lakatos Shamandas kene marako shalakrate gedebe legate gedeba katos Rabush kade la manske barando shadavalas. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father, tonight we ask that you will bless us. You will help us. The Bible declares that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding unto the simple. We have come with our hearts open, ready to receive. Speak to us, O God, and instruct us in the way to go. In the name of Jesus, I pray that as a result of this encounter tonight, our lives and our destinies will never be the same. In Jesus' name, I pray. Thank you so much for the time of prayer. While standing, I want you, on behalf of Pastor Kingsley, to please honor Pastor Mildred, the dear woman of God, we honor you. God bless you in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus. My honor to be here. Thank you so much, ma'am. Please be seated. I want you to pay attention to what I will be teaching tonight. I truly believe with all my heart, like the woman of God um, charged us before I came up. Um, it matters what we hear because the information here becomes the basis for constructing our belief systems and our understanding about God and about life. And we rise and we thrive in life and destiny on the strength of the level of spiritual illumination that we have. It takes more than desire to rise it takes more than intention to rise it takes light Ezekiel chapter 2 when you read verse 1 it said son of man stand upon your feet and I will speak unto you and he had no strength he wanted to stand but he had no strength to stand verse 2 says and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet hallelujah Yesterday at the mainland, during my session, we took out time to pray. Please do well to get the teachings. And tonight I want to teach on a subject that I think many people have not paid attention to and this has been responsible for the divides as far as um, one group excelling and another group failing wolf in life and in destiny it is my my charge and my prayer that we lend our destinies our attention for the few minutes that we have so that we can learn the ways of God. Conferences like this, I would always say, are a feast of light. 
when the light of God comes, then we are empowered to rise and to thrive. I'm teaching tonight on what I title, Choose Life. Choose Life. We're examining the power of choices and the power of decisions as far as a glorious destiny is concerned three scriptures and then I'll begin my teaching. Number one, Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19. Here's what the Bible says. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. I have set before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, I can force you but here is my counsel. Choose life that both you and your seed may live. Straight up we see that the implication of your choices goes beyond you. Your seed will be part of your choices. It says choose life so that you and your seed may live. Per adventure you choose death. Then you and your seed will also die. Are we together? Scripture number two. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 from verse 13. We're reading 13 to 15. Joshua 24, 13 to 15. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not. And ye dwell in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. 14. It says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. Let's read verse 15 if you can see projected. Ready? One to read. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. But as for me and my house. Have you seen that every time it has to do with destiny choices and decisions, it goes beyond you. It is always you and your house. It is always you and your seed. It says, as for me, and my house this is the decision we will serve the lord last scripture first kings chapter 18 from verse 19 this was the contest at mount carmel with prophet elijah now therefore he said send and gather to me all israel unto mount carmel and the prophets of baal 450 please back to 19 and the prophets of the groves 400 which eat at Jezebel's table 20 now so Ahab sent all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together onto Mount Carmel let's read 21 together one to read and Elijah came down uh-huh and said how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people... A great and very wise man made a very profound statement and he said your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life you may want to write that down and please pay attention your decisions more than your conditions decide the quality of your life I think it was Dr. Mudok who said, decisions decide destiny. That your destiny is at the mercy of the kind and the quality of decisions that you make. Our world is full of div 
divides across um, social status. We have wealthy people. We have what we call the middle class. We have those we call poor people. Our world is full of individuals who seem to be icons across different fields of endeavor. And then the other side of the pendulum has men and women who are lessons for generations to come. Old and aged people are full of regrets and stories of wasted years, wasted moments, wasted moments. There are many people today who continue to live in regret and pain as a result of the wrong or poor choices that they made. In fact, in our world and in our, our continent, even in our nation, chances are excellent that when you sit with a very old man and ask him to me, half of the stories will be full of regrets. Regrets of times wasted, opportunities wasted, Hallelujah. And yet the Bible is very clear as to the fact that in Christ, everyone has been called to a life of honor, a life of glory, a life of dignity. I think it was Bishop David Oedipo who said, there are no low callings in Christ, that everyone has been called and preordained unto a high calling. But unfortunately, and I pray it does not become our testimony this night, that out of a handful of people, statistically speaking, out of every 10 people, maybe just one or two, actually rise to the fullness of their prophetic potential within their lifetime. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, thank you. Are we together? Yes. Our world is full of people who wake up early in the morning and sleep late in the night people making no progress whatsoever as i would always say the only thing growing in their life is their age nothing else no impact and i'm glad that this is a church of wisdom your pastor and his dear wife have they, they have helped you understand the human nature from a sociological and a relational standpoint so you're not in ignorance as to the factors that must be captured in the life of an individual for him or her to find fulfillment i can tell you there are many people who are just existing but they are not living and it is my desire as instructed by god to communicate and open our eyes to see that the unit of destiny is time and that whether you are prepared or not with every passing time you may not get it back again and that it is your decisions that move you forward time does not change time only reveals one day go better is just a sociological cliche that mediocres put around their lives to find consolation you do not arise and shine because you are tired of sitting. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Are we blessed? My goal among other things is to challenge and provoke someone tonight to let you see that your life as it is right now in summary is a product of the kind and the choices and decisions that you have made. And let me tell you the truth. I sat back and I saw such a beautiful prophetic word that came from your man of God, the year of the Lord. Did you know that there are people, regardless of the prophetic word that comes, for them, their prophetic word has been the same for the last 10 years, a life or a year of failure. Next year, repeat. Next year, re doesn't matter what prophetic word comes, you see, because they have not learned that when it has to do with advancement and destiny, that a lot depends on them. And then there is an angle to Christianity that sponsors irresponsibility, where people hand over everything to Jesus and just believe you took the risk. I didn't ask you, you died for me, finish what you started. And then people just hands off and don't take responsibility over their lives. 
and they find out that they move from failure to failure someone shout god forbid are we learning so your decisions more than your conditions decide your destiny there are people today who blame the government for their failure there are people who blame parents there are others who blame tribe there are others who blame some sad and negative event that happened i was so inspired by the gentleman who came i don't know his name the gentleman who came dancing here before i came up because i think he ministered yesterday same song and i was so inspired and i said this was someone who was crushed by what a legitimate reason to remain a mediocre we live in a world where we have mastered the act of attracting sympathy we we look for a loophole something that is legitimate and we cash in on it and expect the whole world to stand still because decisions decide destiny i wrote here and i want you to pay attention as you listen every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence please write it down very very important information every choice and every decision in life is connected to a consequence a consequence means the corresponding outcome in honor to the decision you have taken consequences can be negative or positive are we together you are not given the liberty to choose consequences only your choices have the power to choose consequences you cannot choose consequences you can only make decisions and choices it is the decisions and the choices you make that choose your consequences this already is a word of advice if i know that i do not have the power to choose my consequences it means before i make any decision and any choice i find out what consequence is tied to that choice is that true so if you have the opportunity to engage with the holy spirit he will show you an array of decisions and the corresponding consequences connected to them this is what we saw in reading that scripture i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i gave you a will and so i cannot assume that you love life but here is my counsel for the sake of you and for the sake of your children choose life that you may live choose life that you may live i am surprised very surprised at so many people who continue to make bad poor ill-informed and sometimes demonic decisions and expect that magically their lives continue to veto their decisions and still become an expression of god's desire there are many of us who have made wrong financial decisions wrong relational decisions wrong destiny decisions and then we continue to wonder why our lives do not become an expression of the grace and the glory of god and this is a very blessed church i was commending the woman of god on behalf of her and her husband telling them how much that the truths that they communicate go beyond the membership of this church to blessing people literally across the body are we together there are many people who have made poor choices as far as their career pursuit is concerned they made wrong choices and they are now paying for it many people who made poor choices for instance no financial resources no jobs and they were determined to have nine children are we together now i'm not don't feel bad if 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 it attempts to describe you but i'm just this is why we're in the house of god nine children seven male two female then you wonder why 
Africa has a very short lifespan. It is said that in Nigeria, the lifespan is 48 years. Very obvious reason. Scientific reasons, not just demonic reasons. Because of the kind and the quality of thinking and decisions that come. Are we together now? Yes. Decisions decide destiny. There are many corporations. While, while we drove coming to the church, I saw different business outfits. Some small, some literally as if nothing is going on there and then some magnificent buildings and i thought to myself my god all of the people who own these things have the same frame the same brain the same everything the difference the kind and the quality of decisions that they made there are six destiny decisions that any individual who must rise and thrive in life you must be able to pass the test of making these six destiny decisions please i want you to pay attention and like the woman of god said with the intention to learn by the way let me define decisions please look up what does it mean to decide because there are many of us what we call decisions are not decisions there is a difference between a wish and a decision. A wish is a desire, right? Targeted towards a goal or an outcome in your life. A decision is a desire to do something, to achieve something that is backed up with the willingness to pay any price under God to see that that desire comes to pass the difference between a wish and decisions is commitment when you add commitment to desire it now becomes a decision so many people continue to wish for a great life others wish for an anoint i wish i would be as anointed as this man i wish i will be rich i wish i would have influence I wish I would study my Bible every day. I wish that my prayer life would come back to life. I wish mere desires. Desire is important, but not sufficient to produce any glorious destiny. Please, you must learn it. The moment there is no commitment factor to desire, it remains a wish. A decision is a desire that is backed up with the determination under God to see that whatever action you will take under God is taken to see that that dream becomes a reality. Are you seeing that most of the things that happen in our lives are just wishes? Many of you shop online. And um, when you shop online, there is something called a wish list. Have you seen it? Nobody accuses you for leaving it there. You can wish all kinds of things and laugh at yourself while you are dumping those things there. I need this dining set, three million. You add it. It's a wish, remember? Remember, it's a wish. It keeps adding and then you watch it and leave it there. And sometimes two years, three years, five years is there. It's called a wish list. But there is another column close to it where they can say is it check out and pay or pay and check out immediately you know you can buy now and then you buy now and check out and pay and then the order is ready to get to you many people have these psychological and spiritual wish lists and for many of us we've had it for decades strong desires in our hearts that are not backed up with the willingness to commit ourselves to bring it to pass and i pray that tonight as we examine these six decisions may it change our lives forever believe me if you pay attention to what i'm teaching you you will marvel and wonder at what happens in your life within one month of of understanding this and applying it number one the first decision that you must make in order to excel in life to live an uncommon life and an uncommon destiny is the decision 
to know the Lord and to be exceptional in your spiritual life. Write it down, please. In order of priority, the decision to know the Lord and the decision to be exceptional as far as your spiritual life is concerned. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Here's what the prophet said. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 13. Did I get that right? Help me. I'm looking for the scripture. Let not the wise man. Is it 12? Check for me please. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Verse 12. Thank you. No. Please search it for me. Huh? Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Huh? Beautiful. Thus saith the Lord. Let not the wise man. Look up please. Glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Now 24. Let's read together. 1, 2, read 24. But let him that glory had glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Stop there. That the real glory of the believer in this kingdom is that you understand God and you know God. Do you know, we live in a world where if a young man comes and tells you, I'm a graduate, I had first class, but I hate Jesus Christ. I hate anything God, but I'm a serious person. You say, that's all right. At least you are educated. It's just that you are not serious with God. And we sweep it under the carpet. We have downplayed the issue of spirituality and left it to church and pastors. The Bible says, listen carefully that let not the wise man glory in his strength the rich man and all of that that him that glories he should glory in the fact that he knows the lord john chapter 17 and verse 3 jesus is praying and here's what he said john 17 and verse 3 he says this is life eternal that they might know thee the only true god and jesus whom thou hast sent. There are many believers who love the fruits of a healthy relationship with Jesus but are not willing to commit themselves in truth. There are people who have made up their minds that they will not be serious with God. In fact, they frown at anything that drives them into a deeper relationship. The moment you mention fasting, they frown. Prayer, five minutes, they say it's enough. God is not deaf. You see, all these kinds of things are the indices that make for a weak and beggarly spiritual life. And it is dangerous because you raise your children spiritually to honor your conviction of God. If you do not respect God and God does not seem like a big deal to you, it is impossible to raise a mighty man under God being a lazy man spiritually yourself. Are we together? You will only raise your children to reflect your convictions about God. Every arm robber came from a family. Is that true? Every terrorist and every troublemaker disturbing society today came from a family. And respectfully speaking, most of them, the disaster in a nation starts within a region. The disaster within a region starts within a family. The disaster within a family starts within an individual who neglected his role. Chances are excellent that if you do not show your child the way of the Lord, the devil will escort him to another group of careless individuals and they will build that strong momentum and he will begin to grow and evolve until he becomes one who will cause mayhem to society. Every national problem was first a regional problem. Every regional problem was first a community problem. Every community problem was first a family problem. And every family problem, most family problems are traceable to the neglect of someone. 
the decision to know the Lord and to be serious spiritually. During the pandemic last year, most all churches, I think, there was a compulsory, how many months? Two or three months break. Do you know that two or three months break, there were people who by the time they called back, they needed to dig them from a spiritual hole and bring them out to say start with God afresh because just three months of lack of pastoral assistance plunge many people into a realm that is almost as if they never knew Jesus Christ. Three months. Remember the disciples when they walked with Jesus. We will follow you, they said. Jesus kept looking at them, especially Peter. As soon as Judas came to kiss Jesus, he landed in trouble. You see how they all left? The only person that stood with Jesus at the cross was John the Beloved. Where were all the people who enjoyed his meal? The recipients of his miracle, the five loaf and two fish. Where were the people he healed? Listen to me. If you want to live a life of excellence spiritually, you must commit yourself to loving the Lord. There are many people who open their Bibles on Sundays and they don't open it again till another Sunday. Prayer, except it is emergency. Otherwise, God, let your message just speak. This is the year that you will make up your mind to be systemic about your spiritual growth. Most of us grew up and saw our parents. Some of them were not filled with the Holy Ghost. They could not pray in tongues, but as soon as they woke up the first thing, their Bibles were at their side. Is that true? You saw that happen, that ritual for over 25 years. It may be 10 minutes of devotion, but they, it did not fail. We must return back and discipline ourselves to take the issue of our spiritual life seriously. When someone is not spiritual as an individual, when he becomes a worker in church, he will transfer his own seriousness spiritually to that department. It's as simple and honest as that. Is that true? If an unserious man meets an unserious woman, even if they are joined in church, they will all take their different versions of spiritual unseriousness. And that, that home will be, it will be a hub for demons and yokes and curses and all kinds of things. And many of us, sincerely speaking, we come from backgrounds not to scare you, but by default, there are already yokes and covenants waiting for your unseriousness to play out. God is, your destiny and that of your children is at the mercy of your spiritual growth. Listen. You run based on what is pursuing you. If a fowl is pursuing you, you can, a chicken is pursuing me, I can run. But if a lion is pursuing you, there are many of us, you are yet to examine what is really pursuing you. You heard that your grandfather served idols and died. Your grandmother served idols and died. And they said the first male, which is you, should be the person who will be the next priest. Now you said it's not my business. And you see what your life is becoming. It takes high level spirituality to break free in experience from those things. Please take serious what I'm telling you. There are people, there is no explanation to their failure except that there are yokes of darkness that try to tie them down. The decision to be spiritual. What happens as a father when your child tells you, I had a dream. I've been seeing dreams of graves. He said, that's all right. It's, I think you are watching a bad movie. You see that? Whereas this child is communicating something. Imagine if Samuel were not spiritual. If Eli were not spiritual. Yes, even though his eyes were getting dim, he was discerning enough. When Samuel came and met him and said, there is, a, there is something happening to me. I'm hearing your voice. He said, uh-huh. You mentor based on your growth. You lead based on your growth. Let me challenge especially the gentlemen in this church and the men in this church. Your family will be a reflection of the level of spiritual dexterity you have or otherwise. No matter what else you have, if it is minus God, you're on your way to disaster. The decision to know God 
and to be serious spiritually. A woman once reported her husband that he never calls for prayer. They tried in the morning, it didn't work. They tried in the night, it didn't work. But anytime there's trouble, he can call anybody anytime, even in the afternoon, and gather the whole family and say they must pray. I don't know about you, but I am where I am today by the grace and the mercy of God. I would rather lose every other thing but not his presence. We live in a wicked world. When you leave Jesus Christ, you will find out that every other thing you've held on to is transient. Men will leave you in a heartbeat. Systems will leave you in a heartbeat. Your job will throw you out if they have an alternative. You better hold on to that friend that's ticket closer than a brother. Don't let men make Jesus Christ look like an outdated issue in your life. Your phone rings with a Christian song. You quickly off it because you don't want to fall your hand. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I will tell it to my world. Jesus is more than if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. Oh, I will tell it to, to the world. world. Jesus is more than gold. I truly believe there are people here and outside and those following. You're saying, Apostle, this Jesus thing, bah, I, I want to try. It's not about trying. It's about genuinely submitting yourself. To see the value. Listen, if I ask you, sit down here, sir, and I don't tell you why. Even when you are tired, you are not motivated to keep sitting. But if I tell you there is a lion close to you and your safety is to sit down there, your body cannot tell you you are tired. The revelation of what is behind you. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. It says the righteous run it to it and they are saved. My dear people, our world is a wicked world. Don't say I'm a celebrity. Everybody loves me. Get into a situation where you need help. That's when you will understand, you will understand the, the, the self-centeredness of men. There is one who can love you just as you are. Jesus. The decision to know God. It means the decision to study your Bible. You get too big to study your Bible or too busy to study your Bible, you're in trouble. It's an attack. Too busy to pray. Too busy to learn the ways of God. Your pastor would teach and the Holy Spirit would tell you you need to listen to that message. In that message is the security of the next five years of your life. But then the devil occupies us with all kinds of things. Hear me. Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it but in vain. When I started out in life and ministry, there were people who were running. You would think after one year, they would not give room for ministry again. Sometimes I, I challenged a few of them and I said, calm down. The way you are going about ministry, you will fail. You don't understand. This is how this thing is done. Some of them today, I'm not sure. They are even in Christ. Sincerely. You see, Ba, when you walk with God, your life looks deceptively slow. Keep moving with Him. God does not rush people. He gives speed. There is a difference between speed and hurry. God builds you for a long time. You will, you will look at yourself using the indices of men and feel stupid for being serious with God. I've been a worker in this church for four years. Lord, it looks like nothing is happening. Yet you did not know that in prophecy 2022 was the year that God will lift you all of a sudden. And this is what people will say, where did he come from? There is nobody who comes from nowhere. Just because you are not there during the time of training does not mean the person was not trained. There are many of you I sense in my spirit. 
that you have committed your heart to serve God you have served in this church people have laughed at you you've even felt stupid serving God I came here to prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus who sent me I decree unto you may this be your season of appearance your life will be a testament that it pays to serve Jesus please sit down the decision to know the Lord and the decision to excel spiritually the first speak the first index for measuring growth and and um, a life of meaning from scripture is the health of your spiritual life hallelujah praise the name of the Lord the health of your spiritual life number two I'm seeing something I saw yesterday while I was preaching at the mainland I saw yesterday I prophesied it and the Lord is telling me to speak it here too the Lord told me that there was a a lady or someone yesterday her mother has been praying because of what God showed her, the mother at birth that that person was going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of the Lord and the Lord is asking me to declare that same word I just saw light and there are people God is going to begin to work on you listen there is a training in the spirit what God is making out of you even you you do not know you think that you are just an ordinary person who is rising but there is a dealing is why God has been exempting you from what others are enjoying help them please in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead by reason of this encounter tonight may the grace for your destiny the grace that has been building you in the secret where no one has seen the grace that has prohibited you when you should travel it says stay when others are moving it says stay you don't even understand where God is going with you I'm interpreting prophecy for you you are not wasting your time there is a making you have decided to work with God When you walk with God, your life is very strange. Read John 15. Jesus was speaking. He said, the wind bloweth. You can't tell where it's going or where it's coming. I don't know one person who has really walked with God and understood everything about the journey. It is not the God of the Bible. There will be gaps in your walk with God. The mission is follow me. It will take faith. God will not tell you everything and everywhere. Just follow. Follow. Be stupid enough to follow. Some of us have gotten here today by the privilege of blind followership. Lord, I don't know where I'm going, but I know that every time my heart is overwhelmed, ah, I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you. That I will be still and know you, my God. My soul be still and know you, my God. That, that life from state. You're serving God that is responsible for where you are. Can I tell you this? We live in a society that finds joy in mocking God. They will look at you and say, look at your life. Be honest with yourself and you stand in front of a mirror and say God look what you've made out of my life you've made misery out of my life I had a useful life I had a good job when I was an unbeliever I was fine now you brought me to this church and all I can say is I'm a worker hold on there is something he's doing I can tell you there is something he's doing when God is done with you like a trophy when he lifts you to the nations if you ever forget this message look at the life of the person talking with you I will be still see 
when God lifts you there is nothing man can do you are lifted you are lifted it's as simple as that hear me I'm speaking because maybe there is a man of God here in the making and you are wondering God this is our thing I don't am you are asking me to pray you are asking me to fast where are we going and God says just continue what do I do with these prophetic things I'm seeing just continue the training oh Esther continue there is the palace calling you but God will not tell you you are going to the palace he will train you some of you God has refused to tell you where he's taking you so that you will not be distracted just focus on the training but I can assure you that the thoughts that he thinks towards you they are thought of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end my soul be still and know you are God I will be still and know you Please sit down. Can you imagine that? There, just help those under the anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Elizabeth, do not cry about your lack of pregnancy. John is coming. John is not an ordinary child. John is a unique prophet. When you know this, let me teach you something, people of God. You will never judge people by what they are going through. You do not know the kind of dealing God is submitting them through. So you find out someone gets married and no child day one, no child two years. Don't be quick to point fingers. You do not know what God is taking away from their life before that child arrives. Hmm. Has God spoken to someone already? You must make up your mind. Don't say I'm in Lagos, I'm busy. Don't say I have five children. In the beginning, God, restore that protocol to your life. Not in the beginning, a job. The person talking to you is not stupid. I know that you need resources to move. I know you have children. Hey, anything God does not give you, let no man claim he can give you. Please. One uncle can say, meet me by February and he would die by the end of January. For someone, God is waking you right now. He's saying the way you are ignoring God, you are, you are programming yourself and your children to disaster. Apostle, but I'm a worker. That's not what I'm asking you. I'm not asking you if you're a worker. Many people were close to Jesus. Some made money out of him. Some used him for influence. Only a few were changed by that relationship. Your proximity around where God is does not mean you are transformed. Years ago, the Lord told me something. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. And I stand before the God of heaven to tell you if there is anything you have seen that is worth giving God glory in the life of this man, it is a product of what God can do when he finds men who give him everything. Everything. You don't give God your money and keep your brain. You give everything. You're my treasure. My priority. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Who can compare to you? For great is the measure of your royalty. O oh, morning star, you truly are. Pastor Mildred, when I started my walk with God, I was not looking for ministry. I was not looking for fame. I didn't even come from a background that would easily give me that kind of result. I loved him with my heart and my all. I would give up ministry a thousand times to maintain that relationship. Apostle nonsense. Preacher nonsense. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love.
of your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. I'm staying here because God is doing something in the life of someone that after this conference and this night, you are going to make up your mind and say, that's it. That is it. That is it. It is, oh, I am ready. I am ready to walk with Jesus genuinely. Whoever told you he will make you a failure. Whoever told you that when you serve him, you will, you will sweep the floors of life. You don't know him. Find out from scripture. He carried an ordinary lady called Hasdasa and made her queen. Find out what he made with ordinary people. I have made up my mind that my everything belongs to him. It is true. My charge for you, we have six wherever I stop. I need to drum this because sincerely for most people, this is why you are not excelling. We live in a sociological context that makes God look like an interruption to civilization. Lord, I want to make it. Are you not aware? Huh. When people clap and credit their results to their efforts, other people like us back down and we say, Lord, I will be foolish and stupid to join them lifting my hands. No. My life is a testament of what God can do where God can take another person's prayer point and give the one he loves. Learn what I'm sharing with you today. You are a man of God. Yeah, forget about ministry and settle down with God. Businessman is not just by running up and down. Believe me, the person talking to you is not stupid. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of his wings. Please take God seriously in 2022. Anybody who comes around your life wanting your hand in marriage or wanting anything and is not serious with God, there is nothing to pray about. The prayer is already answered. Are we together? Straight to the point. But I can tell you, if it is the God of heaven, give him your everything and watch what he does with your life. Number two, let's hurry up. The second decision you must make if you want to live an excelling life. Remember what we're discussing, choose life. The first has to do with your spiritual growth, your knowledge of God. The second, what is the second decision you need to make? The decision... To contend for a superior belief system. The decision to be transformed in other words. Write it down please. The decision to walk on your mind. Immediately you sort the issue of your spiritual life. The next part of call is not your hands. It's your mind. The decision to contend for superior belief systems. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, the Bible did not say so he will become. So he is. As he thinketh in his heart, that means your physical reality will inevitably be a report card, an attestation of your level of mental transformation. Now, this is the balance because most times haven't, haven't stressed the issue of godliness and loving God. There is a mistake that is being made in church because we downplay also the place of mental transformation. So we have so many people who love the Lord 
but continue to make mediocre decisions that reflect that base thinking you must transit in your mind even jesus philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 the bible says let this mind be in you which was also in christ jesus he did not just because he was the son of god there was a belief system that he your perspectives your viewpoint your thinking you can never rise above and beyond your belief system your life will be a messless reflection of your belief system mediocrity is a life that comes in honor to a particular belief system poverty is the resultant effect of a particular belief system failure and lack of influence is it comes in honor all of ills that we find come in honor here's what the bible says that these signs shall follow them that believe that means i don't need to go into your mind to know what you believe i look at the sign following you because the bible says the sign will come in honor to what you believe so if i see failure and poverty and bitterness and anger they are coming in honor to what you believe. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. You change what you believe and they will change. Are we together? You must contend for renewal and transformation. Believers hear me. Scattered in this beautiful hall and outside and even following online are people who have come from different parts of this nation and around the world yoruba Igbo, northern and south south and all of that and let me tell you this I i'm sure that your pastors are, are experts in that area and so i'm not even going to delve into it that our mindsets are shaped by the following factors number one culture culture number two your past experiences number three your circle of friends and your influence all of these are shapers of your mindset chances are excellent respectfully speaking that if you came from say a polygamous family you will not be too far from things like jealousy and selfishness and envy imagine that you become a worker in church and a leader in church still carrying that egypt with you you will turn that church to look like the house you are coming from you will first create a party for yourself and fight any other person who is not in your group it doesn't mean you are bad you are a victim of a mental construct that came from your past there are people for instance who have suffered for everything they ever had in life 10 years to finish primary school eight years to finish a four-year course when you teach on favor they look at you and say you are joking let's share the grace you are talking nonsense there if you teach on possibilities they will hear but favor no it has not been captured in my experience the house of god is supposed to be like a threshing floor where you you open up your mindset to to that 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 editing by the spirit of god it says in romans chapter 12 and verse 2 it says and be ye be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Many believers are saved, but they cannot move past the gate of salvation because their mindsets do not allow for God to use them the way he intends to use. There are many preachers who remain small and they think their smallness is a reflection of God's inability. Your mindset is like the container that will receive that jar of oil. Remember the story of the the shunammite woman the problem was never the oil it was that the vessel was small the prophet gave her counsel go and borrow vessel he said borrow not a few you don't need to borrow oil the oil will always look like the vessel carrying it hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. 
that no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.